to see each one of you again after a week. May the good Lord bless us as we continue to walk this week. So as a Christian, what is my responsibility today? Both physically and spiritually. As Christians, we carry a lot of responsibilities. Moral responsibilities, spiritual responsibilities. Our shoulder is packed with responsibilities as Christians. And it is our duty to unpack the responsibilities every time, every day, every moment. And wherever it is needed, we have to show our concerns over that. And uh, going to church is one of our responsibilities. Going to church is one of the responsibility and some don't. They believe, why should I go to church? I can worship God at home. No, corporate worship is encouraged in the word of God. So we all get together to worship God. Some we couldn't come to church and God knows the reality. And he blesses us that day, the blessing that he kept for the others. But for some, coming to church is an entertainment. They come, they enjoy the music, they enjoy the jokes of the pastor, they enjoy the fellowship of one another, having tea and talking about so many things, and then go. It's, a, it's like a social gathering. For some, it is fighting. I've seen churches soon after the service, they all catch hold, or, hold of their collars and they fight. You know, that kind of, all, all these things happen uh, wherever uh, we go. I was speaking to a lady and she said, Pastor, you know, if I don't go to the church the whole week, you know, I am depressed. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't talk to others. So I go to church. You understand that? She goes to church so that she can relate with others. Her heart is free, her mind is free, she is not depressed. The other person said, I go to church because, you know, the whole week Satan comes in my dream. You know, sometimes the dream is so horrible that he even comes to, you know, choke me to death. I scream and I come to church. That day Satan is not troubling me. The pastor said, maybe he has taken off that day. <laughs> You know, you can hear stories after stories that why people go to church and you can understand their, their, their reality, their emotions when they share that why they go to church. The third chapter of First Samuel is a beautiful story which gives us one of the greatest responsibility that one of the one uh, uh, one should hold as a Christian. The third chapter of First Samuel will be just going through that and let us learn what the Lord has to teach us this day. It starts with the boy Samuel. You know the story of Samuel. Samuel, when he was a small boy. The mother brought him to the temple of God or the tabernacle or whatever we call the tent of God. Very small, little boy, maybe a little bigger than Aiden. Maybe he can speak a little bit. He can understand a little bit. The weaning, the days of weaning was over. She brought it. That's what the scripture says. So Eli, the priest was there and under the leadership of Eli, this little fellow was roaming in this little chapel we can call it today. Eli told him bring the lamb. He used to bring it, bring the oil, he'll bring it. He said untie the uh, buffalo or cow, whatever it is, he goes and helps him. And uh, you know, uh, whatever work is being told, this little boy was there doing it. And in uh, chapter 2 verse 18 it says that the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord. Even though he was with Eli, the ministry was unto the Lord. And the Bible says the mother used to visit him every year and he used to give him 
clothes, little clothes. So Samuel gets one new cloth a year. You know, our children get many. You know, you go to the shop. Sometimes you see. Sometimes they pull you inside. Say, this is the one I want. You know, the, it's uh, sometimes a little terrible. So I don't carry money. You know, my pockets are always empty. I, I know sometimes these kind of temptations come to my daughter or my wife or to my son. So difficult times. So, uh, you know, Samuel got only one set of dress a year and he was happy with that. And he was working in the temple of the Lord. And chapter three says that in the word of the Lord was rare in those days. God was speaking slowly to people, not very, you know, in a fast way, very slowly. He was speaking, he was giving his revelation very slowly. So people has to hold on to what the Lord's revelation, what he gave in the past. And it was not only the time was uh, uh, that God was slow in his revelation, but it was the play, the text says that it was night. And the lamp of God was about to go down, you know, about to finish. So next day morning again, they have to light the lamp. So spiritually also, it is night. It's everything is going to be quiet. And there should be something should come up to encourage the people. And there the Lord speaks in the night to Samuel. Oh, Samuel. And Samuel thought, Oh, Eli is calling me. And he ran. Just understand that. Both of them sleeping in that little tent. Eli in one corner and Samuel on the other corner. If I call Deepan in my, uh, at home, Deepan, he will respond from there. Yes. <laughs> Deepan, come here. Five minutes, no movement. Deep and coming. I'm coming, wait. You know, that is the tone sometimes. But Samuel ran when he heard his name. He ran from one end to the other and goes to Eli and said, Eli, did you call me? He said, no, son, I didn't call you. You go lie down. Again, he walks back to his bed. He lies down. Again, the Lord calls Samuel. Again, he got up and he ran back to Eli and said, here I am. Did you call me? Now look at the attitude of the boy, that little boy, the obedience, the humbleness he carried. He said, here I am. What do you want me to do? I'm ready to serve. You know, it's whether day or night, I don't care. The minute I hear, I'm here to serve you, Eli, here I am. Eli said, no, I didn't call you son. And Eli understood in his mind, it is God who calls Samuel. So he says, he tells him, the beautiful thing, the message that our children, young children, are you listening? The beautiful thing that young children should learn, not only young children, Everybody should learn. One little word, the message is, Lord, speak, your servant, listen. You know, what a beautiful message. Lord, you tell me I'm listening. I'm hearing so that I can put it into practice. It so happens that Eli teaches this little boy that message. And that little boy goes back to his bed. Again, the Lord calls him Samuel, Samuel. And there he answers. He said, speak, Lord, your sermon. Listen. Samuel thought it was Eli who called. And he responded even he didn't know it is God's call. God understood that when he can respond to a, a, a call which is not called by man, he will be the person for my work because his response is very clear. 
I was wondering as I was reading through the text, I was wondering, you know, God would have, you know, called Eli, right? Eli is a senior man. You know, in the church, you have all this hierarchy of system, you know. He's the senior person. He came into the ministry 40 years back. Hey, you're a junior man, you stand outside. No, but the scripture is very clear. It's equal. It treats both the ministers of God. Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Eli ministered unto the Lord. That's how the text says. And when Samuel came, and when God was speaking to Samuel, he spoke about what's going to happen in the life of Eli, the family of Eli. He could have said directly to Eli. He but the, to listen. Yes, Eli was not willing to listen. And moreover, this he, the way he brought up his own children was not God was not happy with that. You go can can go to the front part of the text where chapter one, two and all, you can get the picture of what these men were doing. Young boys, Eli's young boys were doing horrible things. Sin that God couldn't, you know, digest. God wanted to crush this family. So he spoke that to Samuel and Samuel will be telling that message to Eli. Can you see the movement, how God is speaking? He uses a little boy who was serving Eli to tell a message that God is going to destroy your family. God is going to crush your family. God called Samuel and Samuel responded. God can only, God only can call his people to tell them about his will. And today, I want to tell all of us that listening to God's call or voice is important so that we can fulfill His plan. Psalm 139, the other text said that God calls us because He knows us. He knows who we are and He calls, He knows that He will be the right person for this thing. God has given everybody a ministry in the church. It's not that we come, we sit in the pew, listen and go. No, it is our, there are responsibilities that God has placed on our shoulders. We go to the book of Titus and Timothy. Paul encourages Timothy to speak to each group in the church. The older men, the older women. The young women and young boys and men that they can all grow together in the Lord for his glory. We should understand that God, the one who calls is always real. In first, uh, uh, in John chapter 1 verses 43 to 51, the text that we heard where God calls Nathaniel and Philip. You can see the reality of God. Philip was there and Jesus said, Philip, follow me. And Philip immediately, he followed Jesus without asking a question because he knew who he was. When he went to Nathaniel, his brother, then he said, you know, Nathaniel, you know, I found the one who Moses was talking about. So Philip knew who Jesus was. So Jesus is revealing his reality. God always reveals his reality when he calls us. So that's why he has placed a great responsibility on his shoulder because we know he is real. He can speak so that everything can come to life. God only can call because he is real. And he has concern about his people that his people should live and not perish and that is the message that God told all of his disciples he said go tell my people go tell the world preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in first Corinthians chapter 6 12 to the end it talks about that how a Christian should carry himself the person who listens 
the person who hears the voice of God, how he should carry. And Paul's beginning with the words that everything is lawful unto me, but everything is not a gain. I can do anything. I have the authority to do everything. I can take a knife and kill somebody. I have the authority to do, to do that. But will it gain me something? Will it bring something to me? Will people appreciate that? And then he goes, food for the stomach and stomach for, for food. God will destroy him both. And then he moves down and says, the body is not for sexual immorality. It is for God. <coughs> See the beautiful ways that it is being interconnected. The call of God is the one which embraces and molds us. How do we listen to God's word? How do we listen to God's word? What should happen when we listen to God's word? Two things I will tell and then we'll, uh, we'll wind up. The first thing I want to uh, tell is the sixth chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. Where Isaiah sees the beautiful vision of God. Isaiah chapter 6. And there Isaiah the prophet receives a call. It says in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Where is this picture? This picture is in heaven. High and lifted up. And above him stood the seraphim. And each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. Please imagine that picture. The cherubim. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. With two he flew. And the one who and they cried to one another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. We sing the song, not the hymn, when we come into the presence of God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. When we mean it, when we mean it from our heart, God is glorified. You enthrone God to his place and say, Lord, you're the Holy One. Before you, I am nothing. And this is the picture shown to Isaiah. And Isaiah was uh, five, he says, woe is me, I am undone. Looking at that picture, looking at that great uh, glory of God, the holiness of God, this woman answered, he said, Oh, yo, oh, unto me. Actually, that is the word. Oh, yo, I'm gone. Can I stand before this great God? And he said, Because I am a man of unclean lips. All our sins, either reflect here or here. In our hands or in our mouth. Because we speak and then we act. Sometimes we act and we speak. All that comes from the heart. Is she? So he says, I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of law, hosts. And immediately a seraphim flew to me, having a live coal, which he took it from the altar and touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity has taken away, and your sin is purged. So what is it saying? He's saying, you know, brought the, uh, you know, the fire from the altar. I touched your lips. Now you're a clean man. Then Isaiah says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing and you do not understand. That is the message he passes on. But look at the picture. Look at the way that God touches this person. First he cleanses him, then he sends him with the message. Dearly beloved, the first thing that happens in our life is the cleansing part. That Christ cleanses us. 
that last verse in Matthew's Gospel chapter says, go make, go preach, make them disciples and then baptize. And today, the call of God, the responsibility, as I said, that has been laid on each of our shoulder is to talk about the greatness of God, not to one another, because you and I have the word of God. We open it, we read about it, but there are people who do not hear, who know the greatness of God. People who do not know the cleansing of God. People who do not know about the shed blood of God. And it is yours and my responsibility to take this word to those people and tell them, this is the God who is great. He is the one who created and he has come down to your level to die so that you can get back to God. It is our responsibility, dear beloved. So listening to God's call should bring a change. It should take me to the outer world to fulfill the purpose and the plan of God. The second one I want to share with you is the fifth chapter of Luke, where, Luke, where Peter and Jesus have a conversation. The fifth chapter of Luke. Jesus is standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and there were two boats standing there. And he called the fishermen and said, come let us go into the waters. Then he got in one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put it out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So that was the first part. Then Simon answered, uh, and then he said in verse 4, then he said, uh, Come Simon, launch out into the deep. Let us go and catch fish. Now that is not the time to catch fish. Fishermen always go. Uh, into the sea in the night, they, uh, they drop their nets and they wait for the catch and by morning they come. You go to the seashore, you can see in the morning they will be pulling the rope, you know. And once, once I was in Trivandrum, I went to the uh, seashore and they were pulling by level of rope. Then I wanted to see how many fish they are bringing into the See, I asked them, they said, so it will take time, it will take two or three hours. It's right very deep into the waters. So I understood, right? But Jesus is asking them to do it in the day. And Peter, who's an expert in boats, water, fish, you know, everything, he tells him, he says, Lord, you know, we've been toiling the whole night and we caught nothing. Two times Jesus speaks to Peter by the shore. One is this one and the other one is in John Gospel chapter 20. Both the places, Peter stands before God empty handed. He said, Jesus said, how much you got? He said, nothing Lord. Nothing? Okay, then he said, okay, come. And it says, now draw your, uh, you know, drop your net on the other side. And he said, we've tolerated all night. We couldn't catch one. But at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught great number of fish. The very thing they were feeling low about themselves. No self-confidence. Lord, whole night we tried. We worked hard. We lost our sleep. You know, we tried our best. Nothing. We are so tired now. But you're saying I'm doing it. And they caught a lot of fish on that day. And they bring it. You know, one word of God can change the entire thing. Listening is an important factor where you can see the hand of God literally working. They come to the shore. <coughs> the last verse that is the 11th verse it says, So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed him. <coughs> what is that message? What is that? They were toiling for their life, 
They caught it. And when it came to the shore, okay, Lord, thank you very much for your help. You know, I'll come this Sunday, I'll drop whatever came, 10% of it into the offering. I'll, you know, when I don't get it again, again, I'll come and pray to you. That should, should have been the words. But they, the very nuclear thing that they were working for, they threw everything. They went following Jesus because they knew the maker is better than all these things. He can make things out of nothing. So following him is the greatest thing in my life. And when Peter was touched the second time in John's Gospel chapter 20, he even until the death, he stood firm for the Lord and he said, I'm not worthy to die like my master. You crucify me upside down on this cross. So history says somewhere in Russia, he was crucified. My dear beloved, this morning, this is what I would like to communicate from the scriptures and from the Lord. Listening to God cleanses us. Listening to God makes us to forsake the things of the world and fix our eyes on the Lord for our race to be run in this world. A race of faith which takes me beyond the world. And that's where my destiny with that hope, let us prepare ourselves every week, every day to listen, listen, to listen to his voice. Because that brings the greatest change which we are expecting. Because we have heard the word voice of men and that puts us into depression, that puts us into fear. That puts us away from the truth. But the word of God enlightens us, cleanses us, makes us to set our focus. May God bless us as we as good Christian, with Christians with responsibility, that we fix ourselves in obeying and listening 